All right, this is the time for council members to um, respond. And I'm going to start with Councilman Mays first this evening. And yeah, um, first of all, I appreciate everyone who stayed. Um, Dion from the first ward, I appreciate you um, talking about the situation and support. I do agree with you that since people had jumped out and wanted me to resign and then we went through a legal system and got not guilty, and as I sit here with two tethers on for what's a, a traffic ticket, um, two tethers, 72 days, and um, $10,800 is unprecedented, and I haven't seen nobody come out publicly as far as people and organizations. I've been on this journey, and I'm fighting it, and I'm knocking it down, and I appreciate God's help. I appreciate your support, Ariel. I appreciate what I heard you say, um, Dion, and so I want it to be known. A lot of individuals support me, but publicly, it's people leaving me on my own, and God is good. We got just a little bit left to prove that it was way more than what it started out to be legally. See, we have to prove that we're innocent, and um, they look at us as we're guilty till we prove innocent. It's supposed to be the other way around, innocent till proven guilty. And justice, it should be meted out equally. I take um, to heart what you told me when, you know, I've seen the bullet hole in the car. I don't blame those officers for having to be here versus out in the street. Sometimes it's necessary, but sometimes we have way more manpower that can respond to calls. I know that y'all came to the police department, and I bet you from what you're telling me, they still didn't show up like they told me they was going to meet you in the police department. This is serious business. You got people in violent crimes, and they can't get a police response. I believe as a group of council people, we got more power than we think we got. When we stand together, when we speak together for right and wrong, it ain't what the emergency manager say. The emergency manager gave me my own order. He said, you can't speak to staff. He said, you can't be in City Hall past 5 o'clock. I speak to staff. I'm in City Hall past 5 o'clock, and what has happened to me? Now, maybe something will happen tomorrow, but sometime you have to do what you think is right. You have to do what you think is right. You have to stick together, and you don't fear no man. You don't fear no emergency manager. When people put you in office, people call me from one ward to another and you do your best to service them. Whether you speak to staff, I'm gonna in a minute just start speaking back to people when they come up here and speak. Because it's ridiculous to sit here like a dummy and people don't even know if you hear what they say. And so I said to myself, as I clear up my legal issues, because I'm not foolish to the extent where you just compound your legal issues. You knock them down one by one, you pray to God, and if you clean up your legal issues, then you pick up your protest. I'll try to be here with Rosa Friday at 11, talking about water. Mr. Kincaid, to the council, as I sum up what I'm saying, regardless of how many minutes I said it, we know how to talk, we know how to be courteous, and I hope that we know how to get Snyder out of there. We met with the Treasury Department last week, and I'm so nervous about that chief administrative officer because in Pontiac they put a chief administrative officer in with special powers. And so believe me, to the public and to my colleagues under these stupid rules, we need to start believing that we got more power if we stick together, be a voice, and speak, and stand up, and protest wrongdoing.
God bless you. God is keeping me. And I bet you one thing, if you pray and believe in God and really believe it, I bet you at the end of the day, let's see what happens to Councilman Mays. We got one charge left to try to beat. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And then it was never what it was. God bless you. Thank you, Councilman That's Mays. Councilman Poplar. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'm going to speak on three things really quickly. But the first item that I'm going to speak on is directed to Mr. Darnell Early, who is the EM of the city of Flint, Michigan, not chosen but placed here by Governor Snyder. This is my opinion to Mr. Early. Replacing Paul Heron is a shut-off notice to the community that elected us. Another foul act of power by Mr. Darnell Early, the EM. This I look at as the beginning of some very serious childish games by a man who determines to bathe over and over with the waters of Snyder and his powers. I would suggest to Mr. Early, if this is your way of cutting us off from the community, that this little act, it won't work either. My next um, item is Kroger. The Kroger store had problems mainly with the landlord. And when I tracked the landlord back, the landlord's brother, who met with me, Dane Walling, and others of this city, over and over and over, even met with uh, the former governor, Jennifer Granholm, and also with um, Woodrow Stanley, and Mr. Boji. Never will forget it. He promised that his brother, who owns the mall, Hallwood Plaza, would bring each store in compliance to the new Department of Social Service building. The, uh, the mall was supposed to be refurbished. New stores were supposed to come in. Kroger was our anchor store that we put in the master plan. I had put in numerous calls to Mr. Boji, asking him why his brother faulted on doing anything to the mall, not working with Kroger on their lease, and I have not received a phone call yet. When they were trying to build the Department of Social Service building, Mr. Boji was handing me everything cake, ice cream, candles, and all of that. And he wouldn't even return a phone call to give me an answer on why his brother fought it on his promises and his dreams for that community. So it wasn't totally Kroger's fault that that store closed. Now, my last item, and I wasn't at the committee, but I read it in the paper, uh, the Scientologist that wants to come and straighten out Flint, Michigan. <laughs> well, let me tell the Scientologists and anybody that believes in it. Mm. There's only one man that turned water to wine, and that was Jesus himself. Mm. And God Almighty gave Scientologists what they know. Amen. But science always has a problem wrestling with God, and I, I, I think that's, that's one of the most childish things I've ever seen. Mm. When a man give you your knowledge, and you're going to wrestle with that same man. I think it's real stupid. Now, if Scientologists, hmm. which they took what they want to use from the Bible, it says don't kill, don't steal, all that. They took that from the Bible. If it was so great, and it worked so well, then why are you not over in Iraq, Iran, all over there? Why are you not straightening all of this out? but you want to come to Flint, Michigan, mm. hoodwink a few people that think you can straighten something out 
that God Almighty himself won't straighten out till he get ready to straighten it out. He has not forgotten Flint, Michigan. And he knows where we live, how we live, and he'll straighten it out. It won't be our, our time. Amen. It won't be our time. And it won't be Scientologist's time. Amen. So that's all I got to say. But shame on those that proclaim Christ as their savior. And then you want to flip the script and jump on a man that's coming to town with a hood wink wagon that's going to straighten out everything for you. Oh, I don't think so. That's it. Thank you, Councilwoman. Amen. Um, Councilman Nolden. Yeah, just real quick. Um, I'm very disappointed with the events that happened related to um, Paul Herring. Paul has been doing um, a great job. I've been on council uh, five years, and Paul was here for the first couple of years, and he was being paid. And when the emergency manager came in, he continued to come uh, under his own dime and still perform the service to the community. So I think it's very disheartening for, um, for him to learn 10 minutes before the meeting starts that he, won't, he wasn't going to be doing this anymore. I think that's a disservice to, um, to us on council and to the, the public as a whole because, you know, like has been stated, we have a lot of folks that look forward to 12, 30, 1 o'clock on right. Sunday to watch and then also on Mondays. Right. Right. Um, and, you know, and, and quite a few folks might not have access to YouTube. So right. how are they going to be able to um, be able to see these meetings? So I think it's a very disservice um, to this community for them to do that. Um, and I'm going to have to leave early, so I want to make sure that I just said that before I ask to be excused. Thank, thank you very much, Councilman Northern. Councilman Freeman? Yeah, I, I'm, I'll try to be brief. Um, and I'll preface my first statement with, I didn't support Paul Herring's contract when it was brought to us before, when we were in danger of missing payroll. And you know, I didn't think that that $30,000 or $25,000, whatever it was at the time, was a wise expense. So let me start with that. Um, my reasons for being against it were, number one, financial. Number two, Channel 17 is probably a great thing. I don't have Comcast. My neighbors around me don't have Comcast. My dad on Bennett doesn't have Comcast. My grandmother on Dakota doesn't have Comcast. Uh, we have AT&T UVerse, and we don't get Channel 17. Um, so, so in my, in my uh, mind, it didn't make sense to spend uh, public money on something that the entire public wasn't receiving uh, the benefit of. So until we fix the U, uh, the UVerse issue so that everybody has access to it because it is public access, um, I was not in support of it. Um, I think that the YouTube is a step in the right direction in that it does provide access to people who don't have Comcast, but we need to fix it across the board and that's why I, I um, didn't support it. Um, the second thing is, is that Mr. Del Moroni uh, came up and said that we shouldn't lose a house because of a water bill. Um, uh, water lien is not a foreclosable um, thing. We, the city cannot foreclose on a house because you owe a water bill on that. Um, Ms. Muhammad, was it? Uh, your 911 issue, you, had, you said you had an issue with um, a 911 operator. I suggest, and I think Councilman Mays, is he, she in your ward? No, no, second. It's in the second ward. Okay. Well, whoever you were dealing with, maybe you guys can get together and they can pull the tape. So if you know the day and the time that you were there and if you had an issue. Okay. So maybe they can um, set up a meeting with Ms. Coleman, I think it is, at the 911 center and you can kind of get that. Um, root treatment that you experience resolved so that as we move forward that um, not just you but other residents don't experience that same thing. Um, and then uh, um, I forget what the lady's name was that came up and talked about city council raising um, water bills. Um, not only under this process that we're in now an emergency manager but also it during um, normal times city council does not raise water bills. Um, that is uh, done in normal times through the finance department and they do that through a formula that's in an ordinance. Um, but the city council, um, since I've been on the council, and even when I was on the brief time before, has never voted uh, on a water bill issue. That's something that's done through the finance director. Um, and under the emergency manager, uh, we do not set those rates either. That is something that's set through uh, the emergency manager. So that is not a, a role that city council has now and it is not a role that city council had before. Um, that is something that is, um, like I said, done through either now through the emergency manager or through the finance director. Um, and that's all I have tonight. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you, Councilman Freeman. Okay. Councilman Davis. Thank you, Mr. Freeman. Thank you, Councilman Freeman. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy uh, that you came and asked the question instead of uh, convicting someone because propaganda and rumors is very dangerous. That's what they use when they kill Jesus. You know, I remember a wise man made a statement that said defamation of character and slandering is equal to death because what that does is it kills the respect of an individual in the minds of the people who had once respected that individual. So that's how they did Jesus. So I just want, I'm just so happy. I'm happy that you just asked the question. I don't think you convicted me, but you did ask the question and I, I honor that question. But he answered that question for me. But I'm going to end it on this note. On June 23rd, on that budget, we were supposed to vote. That, we, 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 we wasn't given that chance to vote on June 23rd. The emergency manager usurped that process and submitted a budget on his own without council making any vote. But I'm glad that he made the clarification on that. So now we can leave from that. And on September the 12th or the 14th, Rick Snyder will be here at the farmer's market. And I'm conducting a protest on that day. So I want you to hear this. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me. I want you to hear this. I'm conducting another protest on that day when Rick Snyder is here at the farmer's market because we want him to know that if he can come to an establishment downtown that was built off a lot of money, then he can send this emergency manager a request or a note saying lower the water rates in the city of Flint, Michigan. So I want everyone to know that I will be conducting one when he's here at the farmer's market. And if you want to participate, please do. That's our voice. Paul hearing now, I'm going to get to that subject. I think that it was wrong for the emergency manager to do what he has done to Paul hearing. But I honestly believe that this process in dealing with Paul hearing was a direct injustice. And I think what this, this process is going right here is that these tapes would have probably been edited and modified if Council Member Shelton would not have brought that to the attention. The emergency manager is going to use this video person to throw bad things out there about us and take it to the state to make him look like as if we are in, as if we're incompetent or that we cannot perform the duties of this city, which is far from the truth. So he can use this new guy and replace Paul Heron if he so choose. But when it ever comes to the point when we get back in full power, we're going to do everything we can to put Paul Heron back in his place. Because I think he has served this community very well. And I think that he will continue to serve this community very well. So um, I just want to bring that to the attention and put that on the record. Um, um, Somebody spoke something about stop signs. Well, in my ward, I brought them to an area by a school where stop signs should have been there. But I brought the inspector out from the city in dealing with traffic, traffic control. And from my understanding, which I don't like it either, they are more reactive. They have to have incidents of car accidents and police filing tickets. And I think it's wrong. I really do. And I made an argument about that. And I'm going to continue to make an argument about that. Because wherever children are as a school, there's supposed to be every precautionary procedure should be in place so that these children, welfare and safety is always placed at the forefront. So that is just something I wanted to make mention as well. And um, I'm going to conclude before the bell go off, but I also wanted that to be known, what I said in the beginning. And thank you very much, uh, Councilman <coughs> Josh Freeman, so that we can continue to move on and keep fighting and protesting for the justice that we need in dealing with the water rates. The water rates needs to come down, and I hope each and every one of you tell your friends, tell your family, that when Rick Snyder come here, that we will be standing in front of the farmer's market with signs letting him know that there's a, a tragedy going on in the city of Flint, and we need all of the help that we can get because right now the water bills are atrocious. Thank you very much. Either the 12th or the 14th. I'm going to figure out what day. I'm going to get the, the correct information on what day that's going to be, and I will send it out like I've sent everything else out. Or you can call my office and get my personal cell number. Mr. But I will be there, and you can be there as well. Because I see that you're a concerned person. Thank you.
At the end of the day, Mr. President, I want to address something that they keep telling that woman she wrong about. I told her that. And when people start saying I'm, I'm lying, they, well, at the I'll end when they fit, I appreciate it. I'll come, I'll come back. Right, right, right now, yeah, we're going to keep important. order, and we're going to move around. Councilman Neely, uh, you're next. You know, many of us, we hear about conspiracy theories, and we don't likely or like to believe in those type of things. But I want to talk to you about what is happening around the state of Michigan and how it relates to the city of Flint. Urban cores around the state of Michigan has been under attack under this particular regime which Rick Snyder controls. And we don't have to look far down the road to figure out what is happening inside of the city of Flint. But right now, you know, we're only armed with the weaponry of a vote. And we have to go out and encourage everyone to participate in the process of voting. But I want to talk about what's on our agenda with the, as it was re released as a press release. The Mont Foundation gave the city of Flint $150,000 for traffic engineering <coughs> and public safety for the downtown area during the Back to the Bricks event. But at the same time, during that period of time, the 500 block of uh, South Saginaw was fenced off, and you had probably no less than maybe 14 officers there, Flint police, county sheriffs, state police, and the area was quartered off, and it cost residents $10 to get into this downtown block, while the private interest, and it was rented out to a couple business owners in that area. The 500 block, would you have 501 Bar and Grill, Blackstones, uh, and it goes throughout that block. So any families that wanted to go view cars or watch the, the parade of cars, they had to walk an additional three blocks to going around that 500 block area. That is not what you know, we do in a community that is owned by the community. Tax dollars built that, that area, and in previous years, in previous years, before anyone could take a, a city block or use city personnel, it would have to go before the elected body so it could be sanctioned. That did not happen. That did not happen. And furthermore, as we look at, when I talk about this conspiracy that is happening through urban communities throughout the state of Michigan, they liquidate those communities of all the assets the community has. The selling off of all the assets that that community has. And they talk about it as if they're helping us, but they're not helping us. This, this emergency management experiment has been going on in this community for three and a half years, and we're in worse situation now than we were before they got here. Now you look at what they're talking about moving in the future. They, they paid for a law firm or an auditing firm to look at the possible sale of Hurley Hospital or our water treatment facility in which we own. We can't be asleep, and we just continually can't just complain about it, but we have to be about action and take action step, steps to stop this. As they said that we're in a financial emergency, but he hired another videographer to come in here and uh, videotape today, when Paul Heron has been doing it at his own expense. He pays his own personnel staff with, limited, with a limited skill set, a skill set that's not up to task, to operate the city. We've seen it when they couldn't plow the streets in the wintertime in our community. And he pays them record salaries in a financial emergency. He hires a firm that tells you that they did a, a water study. They only tell you that he was going to raise your water. So it's time for everybody to arm up this November with the only weaponry that we have, which is a vote. And, and we're going to have to come out in more than 5% Six percent. So everyone needs to go adopt eight people and get them to the polls to stop this. Because, you know, as we go forward and fight, we're handicapped here. And we need your help. We can only be as strong as the constituents. And we all are frustrated and angry about this emergency manager experiment that is collapsing urban communities throughout the state of Michigan. It's no conspiracy theory. It's our reality. So we need you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilman Neely. Councilperson Galloway. Thank you. Wait, um, before uh, Monica starts, could I request that all council please 
discontinue sidebars. I mean, each person has been giving respectful time to say what they're saying. I think Councilman Neely had some very important things, but it was very distracting. And I think we should just, you know, have some professionalism and courtesy while we each do our comments. Thank you. Thank you. It was that her time, or may I respond to that? Because, no, no, well, no. then, if no. I will respond no. to that. Councilman Mays, we're, we're going to move on. Because if she can say something about it, I was no. want to, you know. We didn't interrupt you. Well, Don't I mean, interrupt I'm, me. I, we, I'm, I'm just I'm saying. Person, give yeah, me some Thank look. you. You have your five um, minutes. To the young lady that um, asked, do I have a marijuana card? No, I don't have a marijuana card. I don't have a problem with anyone that needs um, whatever form of medication that they need to take care of their bodies. I am fine with that. Um, a f someone in Scott Kincaid's ward called me about this place, and I had an opportunity to visit. And when I saw the candy and water for sale, it prompted me to go in. I think as a council person that will vote on um, this when it comes to the council, I think it would have been irresponsible for me to not have visited one. That's the reason why I did that. Um, secondly, the comment that was made about the Scientologists, and, and Dominique, I hope that you are. Um, I know that you're printing for the Flint Journal. I think it's disheartening that um, someone would, would comment that wasn't in the meeting. Um, I have a very strong relationship, but this is not about religion. We have 400 churches in this community, and we are the worst place to live. So don't you tell me nothing about somebody turning water to blue. I know all that, but the Bible says that the heavens, even the heavens, are the Lord's, but the earth has he given to the sons of men. It is our responsibility to do what we can in the earth realm to make sure that our communities are functioning in a moral code. And when you went through the presentation that was given to us, I know the word of God from Genesis to Revelations. This was not about Scientology. It was not about Christianity. It wasn't about any of those things. This was about a moral code of ethics that every human being, whether they believe what you believe or don't believe what you believe, should live by. And if they do this, it will keep your community safe. And if you look at it, and I challenge anybody that read that Flint Journal statement to study for yourself. It says, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. But because you reject knowledge, I reject you. So this is not about God moving in his time. He's waiting for us. And when this presentation was brought to me, it brought me to tears. Because it was things that need to be spoken to on a daily basis that have nothing to do with God. It has to do, because some people don't believe in God. Everything has but, to do with God, Miss Monica. Everything. I'm not talking. Even you, Let's, me, and Jackie, everything. Jackie, please. So don't. we're not going to get in a debate about God. Excuse me, Mr. President. There are so when you get through, when you get through, when you start talking about God, Council and taking him out of anything, Jackie, I'm going to say something to you. Jackie, you know what, Council okay. Council okay. Women Poplar, listen, Jackie, you guys listen. This is not about that. What I'm saying is there are 6.7 billion people in the world. Everybody doesn't believe what you believe. And so you need to not be debating. Paul said, it is not time for us to debate. It's not about that. What can we do to bring the community together? So that if you don't believe what I believe, if you're my neighbor next door, we live in unity. You don't steal from me, I don't steal from you. You don't kill my kids, I don't kill your kids. You don't live in promiscuous, and I don't either. These are just things that will help Good us night, Mr. regardless President. of what you think. And so I just want it to be said that please research this for yourself. If you see the short video that we watched, it brought tears to my eyes because it was simple responsibility that every human being should live by. I don't renounce God in any... Jackie. But they're not. But Jackie, they're not. Councilwoman Poplar, you're out of order. 
think and I agreed with the police chief. If you guys look at the comment, the police chief, Chief Tolbert, is a man that has come into our community and is very serious about doing what he can to make our, our city safe. And Chief Tolbert said, it is worth taking a look at. If it's something that can help our community, I am more than willing to do that. And so as a community, we need to find a common ground because everybody's not going to agree with you. And that shouldn't be the barrier to making our community not better. And so I'm just saying, it says live peaceably in the land, even if you're a foreigner. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Councilperson Galloway. Councilperson Van Buren. Okay. First, I'd like to oh, say. Can I just say this? And, and Scientology, just Dominique, at the end of the thing, it didn't even say. Monica mentioned as she was introducing who she was, I'm a Scientologist. That was the only thing that came up as she introduced herself at the end, just thank, for the record. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilperson Galloway. Okay. okay. Um, I would like to start out by saying thank you to the group that is here. Even though we only have 10 people, which is kind of a low number from what we've had in the past, all of you each brought very important information, either of what's going on, where some of our problems are, and also updates on what we should know on, on what we can do for ourselves, like as to what Chris shared with us. Now, as to the uh, taping, I think part of it may have also stirred up from when we had the blue ribbon presentation at our last council meeting. It was reported in the journal that we had a three hour video and that the council was obnoxious and outrageous and uh, truly uh, disrespectful to the presenters. And that this was seemed like a three hour outrage that council had displayed. But if any of you who were here or took the time to watch the video. Our meetings are normally three hours anyway, so we were within our normal time. Our first hour is just usually going over basic information to get our agenda started. Then we had the presentation from the Blue Ribbon Committee, which was probably about a, a, another hour, and within that time also questions from the council, which we all, I think, were on the same uh, line as to feeling this, this needed more community input, input and support. And then the last hour was reserved for public speaking. So I don't know how this meeting was out of control. This meeting was made possible for you to see on YouTube and also uh, through the efforts of Paul Herring. And um, all I can say regarding Paul is that we have a dedicated person for months and years making this information available to the public. I look forward to watching it on Channel 17. Currently, I don't have access to that, but that doesn't make me stop from either if I really want to go see the presentation, to go to someone's house that have it, or contact Paul and get a copy from him, or since I'm already here, I don't think I need to see it that often, but. It's nice to know that it's there. So now, what's going to happen? I don't know. Paul was trying to attempt to record what he could of today's meeting, but because of some of the equipment that he needs, uh, he doesn't have access to right now. Hopefully, that'll change for the future. But I'm asking members of the council, let's help to support this with some type of donation. I don't care if it's $10, $15, $20 for each time he's here. I'm asking for the public. Hey, just a couple of dollars. Just something to help pay for the equipment, uh, the DVDs that he has to use, and his time, and to show that we want that information to be out there to the public and available like it should be. So I'll leave that food for thought, a challenge to each of you that are here, and uh, we'll see what happens next time. As to uh, police response time, um, I wish I had known about this last week because I had not had any information on it. It could have been discussed at public safety meeting, but I definitely already put it on the agenda for our next month's meeting. Uh, and it seems to be becoming an increasing problem. 
A lot of us interact with each other, and sometimes things may not go on in our ward, but may go in somebody else's ward, and we get contacted, so we get shared. There's a number of council persons here that have given me information that they receive in my ward. Uh, in fact, yesterday I received one for uh, Councilman Mays regarding the lack of police response, uh, which I appreciate, and I have talked to the citizen, and we're working on there. What I would like to let you know, there are monthly meetings between the Michigan State Police and Flint Police Department, it meets twice a uh, month. It's open to the public. You get to talk to the command officers. Sometimes the chief of police is there. Come out to those meetings and share these situations with them. And there is one tomorrow. If you can make it, 530, Christ the King Catholic Church on the corner of Lapeer and Seymour, right next to ABC 12 and the food bank. 5.30 tomorrow. I think that would be a good opportunity to be there, to share, find out from them how to improve the situation. I plan on being there. I hope I see you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilperson Van Buren. Um, I'll come to you, Eric. I just need a couple minutes. Um, for the ladies that are here from Terrace Court, I know exactly where you're talking about that concrete. I turned that in to get repaired, where the road is sunk real bad. I'm going to give you my cell phone number. I want you to call me, and I'll get an answer um, from our transportation department at when, when that's going to be fixed. It's on the list to be fixed, um, but they have to do some repair work. They have to take out the old portion of the road. They've got to put in new um, fill dirt and pack it down because that corner consistently sinks, and it has to be repaired every three or four years. So. I mean, I drive over there pretty regular. Um, I know exactly what you're talking about. I've turned that in to be repaired. It's going to be repaired. Um, before you leave, I want to give you my number where you can call me. I can give you a, an approximately time frame when that's going to be repaired. Um, the issue with Paul Herring, I mean, you know, I've supported Paul. I personally have given money to help Paul when uh, he wasn't getting paid. I, I, I think that you know, publication of our meetings is very important for the community. Not, as Councilman Freeman says, not everybody has Comcast and can get it, but um, as we go forward, we need to look at better ways to, you know, get our message out and hopefully resolve this problem. And I don't have anything else. I'm going to give Councilman Mays just a couple minutes and then we're yeah. going to adjourn. Yeah, Councilman real Mays. quick, because I got to be in the house at nine with them tethers, so you can believe this. Well, let me go quick. back. I haven't finished my five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, check this out. They responded to you, ma'am, that there was not a vote of an increase of a water rate. Once I hear that develop and Mr. Davis says that he's glad that Josh Freeman talks about it, then this is my position. When I put my name on something or tell you something and people try to say that I'm wrong in this poison, just like I do in court, I will prove, and that's what we was talking about, Ms. Van Buren, with, with Mr. Finance Chairman Josh, uh, when you were saying don't talk. That's going to turn out to be an important issue. And so, Scott, I appreciate you letting me have these two minutes. I'm going to get home. But I guarantee you, when people try to make it seem like I'm giving bad information, it's a line item. Revenue, water rates, increase. That budget includes the increase in our salaries for us and the mayor, and it also included an increase in water rates. The vote was 7 to 0. Nolan was absent, one abstention, and I sent emails out telling people what people wanted, what we should spend time doing, and I will prove it when people start calling me a wrong person talking in public. See, I don't believe in accusing me when I give you information of a wrong communicating person. That's like calling me a liar. And when I'm called a liar publicly, I'll go all the way to prove that my information is accurate. So that'll be chapter two. And I'm asking people to leave that alone, call my words poison and lying. When you do that, it's on. So guess what? Chapter two, thank you, Mr. President. I'm going home. 
Let's see who's right. Our, our meeting is adjourned.